the beauty industry is my foundation, although um, I work with all industries, um, especially in corporate arenas, uh, things like creating culture, um, systems in the business, branding. Um, but one of the things I find is, I, let's just look at, at the beauty industry, for instance. Everybody's selling hair. Everyone's selling a product. Um, everyone's doing a cut party. Um, there, there are just certain things within certain industries that are what the industry is known for. So if you're looking to create a lane for yourself, then you need information and ideas that are outside of the, um, the normalcy of what's going on in, in your industry. This is why I feel people stay so stuck in, in what it is that they're doing. Uh, so I work with a lot of people who have been doing whatever it is they do for quite some time. And they want to step into spaces of becoming an author or speaking. Kendall, hey dear, how are you? Speaking or, or coaching and things of that nature. Do you know the number of people who are speaking who aren't getting paid? The number of people speaking who are not getting paid. So I asked this question in one of my private groups recently, and there were many people who were speaking or desired to speak as another form of revenue, but they weren't getting paid for it. Why do you think people are going places and speaking and not being paid for it? It's because either they don't understand their value, they don't have contracts in place, they don't have the systems in place to assure that they're paid for it. So yes, it looks great on social media, but it doesn't look all that good to your bank account. And when you step into new environments, as we talked about before, that was the second thing that you needed to consider was a new environment. You step into a space where people get paid for what it is that they do. You no longer have to do pro bono all the time, but much of it is how you position yourself and how you present yourself, um, you know, in your brand. Laura, Kendall, Amanda, um, it says those people are watching. Good morning, girls. <clears throat> I think that the mindset work is so important, as I said before, because it's about unlearning some of the things that we've learned um, before. I want to go back to number one, the number one thing, if you're really serious about growing your business, which I said was sacrifice. So the number of people who share with me that they're in a, a, a cyclic circle of debt that they've invested in growing their business. Now, you do got to invest. If you want some coin, you got to spend some coin. But I feel that people are investing in the wrong stuff. Like they're they're investing in the wrong thing. It's the thing that they're doing is not the thing that's really going to make a trajectory shift in their business. So it may make a slight, you know, move, but um the accumulation of debt is from sowing into things that aren't bringing you a real profit, right? And there are levels and stages to growth in business. And if you don't understand them, then when you're supposed to be in a stage of expansion or growth, you're actually going to still be in the C stage. That C stage is when you, you know, you're still hustling and kind of grinding and you're just trying to get clients and, you know, you're just trying some of everything. If you don't understand what the stages of growth are and what you should be doing in those different stages, it makes a significant difference. And so it, it does my heart of growth for your business if, you, if you're if you in the same environment. It just doesn't work like that. When you think about the five people that you spend the most time listening to, you're an average, your income is normally an average of theirs, your, you know, what you believe morally is normally similar, the places that you go, all of it is, it's an average. And so when you're really ready to grow your business, then um, you're willing to get into new environments. You're willing to invest in being in, in new tribes.